Cole. We are live here in our Functional Medicine Health Center in Pittsburgh, where we see patients around the world via our virtual functional medicine practice uh, and locally in Pittsburgh. And we have one of my heroes on today. I'm so honored to talk and to have Dr. Frank Littman on our Facebook Live. How are you doing, Dr. Littman? I'm great, Dr. Cole, since I've never called you Dr. Cole. I thought you had... <laughs> Let's just be friends. I'll call you Frank. You can call me Will. <laughs> so how have you been doing? You have to, for the people that are living under a rock and do not know who Frank Lippman, in, Lippman is, can you fill them in on who you are and what you do? Sure. So I'm a physician. I've been doing a variation of functional medicine probably for the last 30 odd years. I qualified as a physician in South Africa in 1979. Um, that's a long time ago, almost 40 years. Um, and soon after my training, I realized there were deficiencies in Western medicine. It was wonderful at crisis care and emergency medicine, um, but it wasn't particularly good at dealing with the common problems that people were having. So early on, um, I realized I needed to do something else to expand my, my, um, repertoire or my toolkit. And, uh, uh, I emigrated to the United States in 1984 and I had to do a residency and I landed in the South Bronx where um, it's a pretty rough area in those days, but there happened to be an acupuncture clinic there. And so I started going to the acupuncture clinic uh, while I was doing my residency. And then I was exposed to both Eastern medicine and Western medicine. And in 1984, I realized that Eastern medicine was wonderful at treating at the chronic problems that you can't poop and you're tired and, can't sleep and Western medicine was wonderful at treating broken bones and acute heart attacks and uh, acute pneumonia, etc. So I saw um, 30 odd years ago that the future of medicine would be the combination of the two. And I went on this journey of searching because in those days you had to search for these things. And I started with Chinese medicine and I got into nutrition and herbs and yoga and meditation. And over the years you refine and you refine your tools and eventually became what we now call functional medicine. And so uh, that's what I do. I use uh, um, the knowledge I've learned from Western medicine with the wisdom I've gained from a lot of the ancient traditions. That's amazing. And you have really, in my mind, revolutionized um, natural health care, functional medicine, integrative medicine for our entire industry. And I know you probably... Uh, you're a humble man. You don't see the impact that you've had on our industry, but you have, um, you're a, an amazing leader in our field. Thank you. I think um, you elevate me too much. Yeah, but I think, you know, I was just doing what I thought was right. And, um, you know, there have been some unbelievable um, teachers that I've had, you know, Ephraim Korngold and Harriet Beinfeld in Chinese medicine. I had an unbelievable yoga teacher. Jeff Bland was a good teacher. So what I've done is taken these wonderful teachers that I've had, distilled their information and sort of you know, brought it to my patients and then try to bring it out there with you know what I write about. And so it's really bringing a lot of these ancient traditions and, and um, wise, wise people and sort of bringing their knowledge and um, teachings to a bigger audience. Yeah. And we saw each other at the end of last year in Arizona, uh, and you were telling me a little bit about your book that's coming out real soon. So can you tell everybody about the book, how you came up with the concept? I'm very excited about it. Sure. So here's the book. Um, comes out next week, April the 3rd. And this book is really this distillation of a lot of this wisdom from, from all of these traditions. It's over 100 tips. I've made it very simple for people. And over the years, I've had so many people come in and they, they, they have time constraint. No one's got any time. Everyone's busy. There's so much information out there. No one knows what to do. And they come into my office and they say, Doc, you know, just tell me what to do and how to do it. I'm not interested in why. I've got no time. Just tell me how to do it. So the book came out of that, this, this, this solution to the dilemma so many people have what should I do to get healthy? Um, so I try to break through the clutter that's out there and make it simple for people. And I have beautiful illustrations in the book. 
So here's my mandala, for instance. I have a medicine mandala, um, which is sort of my trying to articulate or bring my Eastern philosophies of a mandala and bring my Western knowledge and the knowledge that I've learned and put it into this mandala. And I created this good medicine mandala where I put all these keys that I think are important to get healthy, how to eat, how to sleep, how to move, how to protect oneself from all the chemicals and toxins out there, how to unwind and relax, and how to connect, which is very important, how to connect to oneself, to your community, and to the earth at large. So I'm bringing a lot of these aspects of health that we often take for granted and ignore and don't realize how important they are, and put them all together, and put them in a way that you can actually start at any point. That You know, the book is not a what I call a no program program. It's not a 21 day fast. It's not a specific, you've got to do X, Y, and Z. It's a, it's a circular program. You can enter the circle at any point. So you can start with going for a walk in nature. You can start by just being kind to someone. You can start by having dinner together with your family. So there are these, all these concepts that we take for granted and don't realize how important they are to our health and move on from there. As you start feeling better, you go on to the next step. And you and the idea is to start making habits of these key, key concepts that I think will affect your health. That's brilliant. And it's called How to Be Well. And as you mentioned, these are the essential principles that you've learned through your years of experience that people, everybody in, on the, in the world should be implementing, right? Absolutely. And it's simple. I try to make it simple to or make people realize that's not that difficult. It's actually simple. You just need to make your bad habit, change your bad habits into good habits. Great. And we put the, in the comment section below, we put the link for pre-order uh, if you're watching this within the next week, but it'll be out soon after that and you can buy it on Amazon How to Be Well. You can, yeah, you can even buy it now. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yes, of course. So yeah. pre-order is live now. Um, so if you had to, Give our listeners just three healthy habits that you had to pick to implement into their life. What would be your top three? Well, I mean, it's difficult because the top three, I'll give you three that have probably made the biggest difference in my life and probably most of my patients, but that doesn't mean that they're the right three for you. I would say one would be stop eating sugar. That probably you'll get the most bang for your buck, but that can be difficult for people. Number two would be a, a practice of meditation. You know, for instance, I get up every morning and I meditate for 20 minutes. And until that became a habit of mine, it was very hard to realize how important it was. But now that I do it every day, I see the benefits of it. So I think creating some type of meditative practice is really in essential. And the third, I would say, would be move your body as much as you can. It's not a matter of going to the gym. It's a, it's a matter, I mean, unfortunately, you're giving me three. This is tough. You know, get up as much as you can move. It's not about exercising. It's moving as much as you can, going for a walk. Um, but I'm going to make it five. Sleep is important, getting some good sleep habits. And, and don't forget about this, this, the non-material aspects of your health, about going for walks in nature, about having gratitude, um, maybe getting a pet can be helpful. So I think it's hard to choose three. The three that made a difference to me were probably stopping sugar, meditating, um, and uh, moving my body more than I thought I should. That's great. For the people that are listening, they hear us talking about meditation and mindfulness. Do you have any specific, simple things that the average person can do to start bringing more med meditation or mindfulness in their life? Yeah. What I what really helped me right from the beginning, it didn't get me into making it a practice, but the idea of getting out of my head, because most of us live in our heads. So I remember many, many years ago, one of the meditation teachers always used to teach you to feel your butt on the chair, feel your feet on the ground. Whenever you want to get out of your head, feel your body. Um, so, you know, yoga is a perfect example of 
the moving meditation, you know, as a, Gabriel Roth, who's an old, who unfortunately is now dead, but used to always say the, the quickest way to quiet your mind is to move your body. So getting into your body is a wonderful way of getting out of your head. So if you're sitting down, just feel your butt on the chair, feel your feet on the ground. If you're moving, you know, feel your feet walking on the ground. But just getting out of your head is such a good thing to do as often as you can. That's great. For um, if you had to say, because our field of health and wellness is is rapidly, uh, lots of exciting things coming out. A lot of it's rapidly evolving. What is as someone on the cutting edge of all of this stuff? What is some new health? or maybe unusual new health therapy or product that has you excited? Well, I'll push what you're talking about. I mean, I think the whole ketogenic diet is very interesting. I mean, it's something relatively new to me. I mean, I obviously knew a little bit about it, but it's probably only in the last year or two that I'm using it a little bit more for certain things and seeing the benefits for certain. I'm not saying everyone should eat like that, but I know that this is a big, Thing for you now, so I think I think that's something really, really interesting that I think is important. And once again, not for everyone, but I think it has a lot of benefits for a lot of, um, uh, especially chronic problems. Um, what else would I say, which is new? Um, you know, I think a lot of what I say, which is new, is actually we, we take from the old traditions. You know, for instance, here's a perfect example. Everyone's talking about intermittent fasting, for example. I was taught early on by my Chinese medicine teachers to eat dinner earlier and eat breakfast later. You know, breakfast is breakfast. So their concept was, well, you're resting your digestion and your, your, your digestion, your earth element is the center and it's really good to rest your digestion and, and to have things um, working efficiently there. So they didn't realize the science behind of inter behind intermittent fasting and they didn't think of it in the same way as we think of it today but they were onto this years you know for centuries about eat your dinner earlier and your breakfast later which is basically intermittent fasting yeah it's so true i mean and what not re really research is catching up with antiquity i mean there's really nothing yes. new under the sun and you're right absolutely and i on the record in front of everybody thank you so much for writing uh such kind words about my book that's coming out i appreciate it when is it coming out august 28th okay good Ethereum, yeah so if you could pick and i know we're this is hard to pick just one but if you had to pick one food and one supplement that has changed your life the most and that you get the most out of what would it be well when it comes to supplements i take so many um <laughs> Um, I'm quite enamored by glutathione, if I had to choose one. I mean, I hate choosing one, but I never miss my glutathione, and I never miss my nicotinamide riboside. So I'm sort of quite into the whole mitochondrial thing. So those would be two. I'll have to go to two. And what was the other question? What food? Yeah, one food, yeah. Well, I would say, not that I'm a fan of just one food, but cauliflower has really been an important part of the way I've changed my eating habits because with cauliflower, you can make cauliflower rice and cauliflower mash. So you get that that um, that desire for starchy food satisfied, but it doesn't impact your blood sugar. So I'd say I eat a lot of cauliflower, cauliflower mash. Like last night, I had cauliflower mash with my grass-fed burger. Um, I'm having cauliflower rice often. So um, I, I would, you know, I hate to choose one food, but I use cauliflower a lot now because I'm on a very low-carb diet, and cauliflower definitely is good for that and, and an easy food to eat and, you know, once again, it does satisfy that starchy craving and you, it doesn't impact your sugar. Love it. So people want to know uh, how Frank Lippman eats. And you mentioned being on a lower carb diet. What is, do you track macronutrients, proteins, fats, and carbs? Do you not? And no. What is it? I hate counting. I, I, don't, I don't encourage people to count. I just, you know, I listen to my body, but I 
don't, I, for the most part, I eat low carb. You know, I'll have a, a shake in the morning with my chocolate whey and almond butter and coconut oil and avocado and chia seeds and a little bit of cinnamon and coconut milk that's full of fat and protein. Um, and that keeps me going. Sometimes I'll have a bulletproof bar. Or I'm actually making my own bars now. I'll have, um, so something, sometimes I need that, sometimes I don't. And then at lunch, I'll have protein and vegetables. I'll have chicken and, and salad or fish and salad, whatever it is. And dinner is, is, is similar. So um, I don't really, and occasionally I'll have some fruit, not much anymore. I, I became pre-diabetic eating lots of grains and fruits. I changed my diet. So I don't count anything. I just tend to eat protein, vegetables, and fat. I mean, you know, vegetables, protein, and fat. So, you know, I get my carbs from my vegetables, but I don't count anything. Good, good. All right. So besides your book, How to Be Well, what is upcoming and new for you? Well, I'm very excited. I'm working with this amazing chef. I call her the nutrition magician. And we're developing snacks, healthy snacks, um, that anyone on a keto diet can eat, anyone who eats that, you know, because I'm always looking for something to travel with, you know, when I'm traveling and there's, you can't eat anything. And um, so I'm always looking for something healthy, whether it's a bar or snack. So we've been working on healthy snacks, healthy smoothie, smoothies that you can travel. Anything, you know, I'm obsessed with, um, with you know, trying to stay healthy on the road or, you know, when you have no time, as are my patients. So I've been working with this wonderful nutrition to try and, you know, she's helping uh, develop these these products with um, with me on this. So I'm really excited because they taste delicious. I can't wait for them to come out. So what, do done they, tastings. what do they come out and how can people get them when they come out? I don't know. Well, it'll be on, obviously, it'll be on the Be Well website, but, uh, we, you know, we it's complicated, you know, getting them out there, but we've gone through the first stages where the tastings and now we're working with co-packers. So it's exciting because they're delicious and healthy. That's great. Can you give us a little teaser of, like, one product that will be coming out? Yeah, it's cauliflower popcorn. Yum. So instead of popcorn, it'll be cauliflower. Like, you know, instead of popcorn, you're going to have cauliporn. <laughs> I love it. And that is, I don't, that comes in brand, something brand new that I know my patients will love that. I'm super excited. Uh, no, it's, that, it's fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we're working on some good stuff. That's great. Well, well, thank you so much for coming on, Frank. I really am honored. Thank you. And I'm so excited for your book. It is not only jam-packed with information that anybody can use, but it's beautiful to look at as well. Yeah, it is. So there, uh, there. It's a great book. Have, have, you got, have you got the copy? Did we, you must, did we send you one of the copies that just come out? No. Okay, we'll get it to you. Yes, I, I just saw preliminary things from it. Okay. Uh, but I can read all of it. Great. Okay, well, thanks, man. Thank you, and good luck with your book and everything. It's always Thank great you. to speak to you. Likewise, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye.